Hello YouTube and welcome to a new tale of genetic. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing a phenomenon that I've personally witnessed in every single gym I've been to. And you'll see that for this little story time, I'm going to put the PC nonsense completely to the side. And I think it's good timing because we're in the middle of an unprecedented uh, censorship and attack on freedom of speech. So why not have some fun about it, right? So today I want to discuss something that I've witnessed and that I've seen happen every single time I become a regular to a gym. And that is the apparition of the gigantic black man. And that is an event that is always interesting because when it happens for the first time, it marks you for the rest of your life. And what tends to happen usually is you're sitting on a bench, maybe with 185 or 225 on the bar, and some guy that looks more like a gigantic elephant than a human being comes in, takes the bench next to you, and is going to keep stacking plates on that bench until all of the 45s in the gym are gone. And across the board, every time I've seen that happen, the guy is black. So I'm not making generalizations here, but it's always been my experience. Every time you have one of those massive guys who is like 300 pounds and looks like a square, tends to be a black dude. And that guy is going to be benching 500 pounds with no spotter for reps. And when you dive deep into that, if you ever approach them, they tend to be the nicest guys. But you also realize that they only do that. They only bench. And they don't even really think about it. They don't really peak for powerlifting. They just come to the gym, put plates on the bar, bench, go home. They don't pay attention to volume or intensity. That's all they do. And it, it always cracked me up because it's something that throughout my life, I've had many encounters with because I haven't just met one gigantic black dude or two gigantic black dude. I've met a plethora of them. And so I'm going to be telling you stories today because when it comes to genetics, especially if you live in a country that has a lot of African immigrants, you know what I'm talking about. The freaks coming from that continent are something else. We're talking about a caliber of human being that just makes no sense whatsoever. And so I, I just want to share that experience with you because it was always moments that I look back to fondly and I want to be able to see if maybe you guys have the same experience. And I just want to share the stories because they're funny. So one of that, those experiences involved me going out on a rainy day. And I vividly remember having an umbrella and sort of walking around. And you know, when you have the umbrella, it sort of hides what's uh, before you because the rain is coming in your face. And I was paying close attention to what was in my peripherals. And I remember seeing someone at some point coming from behind me that I, I hadn't heard. And it sort of, you know, shook me back into, you know, paying attention to what was going on. And I remember seeing something, but I couldn't really see what was going on because my eyes weren't focused. And I just stood my head. And the umbrella was hiding the top. So my field of vision was, was cut here. And I remember just seeing a torso. And keep in mind, I, I'm six feet. And in my country, in France, that's pretty tall. It's not super tall, but that's much taller than average. And it was the first time in my life where I couldn't see the head of someone. Meaning that the only thing I could see was his body. I couldn't even see his shoulders. I could only see an arm. And I remember slowly, you know, moving the umbrella up, just revealing the creature on my left. And it was endless. It was like a movie, you know, when, you, we, when you, the character removes something to show the creature and it takes forever, but eventually there's like a jump scare. There was no jump scare here. I just slowly did it and the guy didn't pay attention to me at all. He was just walking next to me and we were walking the same direction. And I kept doing it and doing it. And the guy eventually appeared. He was gigantic one of the tallest human being I've ever seen in my life. And it's really strange, especially for someone like me who very scarcely gets mobbed in public by people who are much, much taller. But he was just a completely different brand of man. And he was above seven feet tall. He must have been something like seven two. And he sort of went his own way and I was sort of shocked. And the funny thing is that that guy lived in my district so I actually saw him again another time. And this time it was from a distance and it was even more shocking because as I was walking, I sort of saw someone in the distance that looked strange. 
because they looked like they weren't on the same plane as other people because they were way too tall. And I thought to myself, oh, it might be just a, a, an optical illusion. They might be, you know, the street might be a little bit curved and therefore they look like they're closer and so it makes them look bigger. But the more I was walking towards it, the more I had the better view of that group of people, the more I realized, no, it was just that the guy was literally twice the size of anyone else. Everyone else's head came to his hips. It was strange. It looked like a glitch in real life. And I, I'm not sure. I suppose it's the same guy because unless I had two seven feet four freaks in my neighborhood, that guy looked like he could have just picked up people and just you know, take a bite and eat them right there, like an ogre. And everyone around him was sort of looking at him and I think he was just used to it because he was just walking. But just the action of seeing that guy walk was reality shattering. It was like a, an experience of life. It was amazing. And so that was the first gigantic black guy that I encountered. But he, it wasn't the last because that experience then transferred into gyms. And for gyms, as I explained, in one of my uni gym, there was that guy that just showed up and just benched a million pounds and then went home. That guy actually ex existed in two different uh, types. There was a clone of that guy because I remember that person, that, pers that specific man coming to that gym, eventually leaving to go to something else. And he was immediately replaced by another gi gigantic black guy. To which my question is, is there a quota of these guys? Do we need to have one per gym? Because in every single gym I've been to, there was one. There is always one, but never two. So I wonder what happens if there's two in the same gym at the same time. Do they get at each other? Do they, do they fuse to make another bigger black guy? And maybe it explains why I saw that seven feet six monster walking the street. So that was for the gym and for the, uh, to just to crush your spirit a little bit, because those are tales of genetic. It's the one portion of the channel where I get to tell you that, yeah, genetic do matter. It doesn't matter for you because you can change yours, but you will see people with much better genetics than you. I was in the gym and I remember I was benching or doing overhead press. And I saw a guy again, gigantic black guy walk in and he wasn't that tall. He must have been, and I say he wasn't that tall. He must have been six feet eight. So tall, but not, not freaky tall. And he was just thick. And it's funny too, because you can tell from which parts of Africa these guys are coming from. Cameroon, Nigeria, those are blends of giants. And they're not just tall and lanky, they're also big. And uh, they, they have a specific type of wrestling that they engage in. Those fights are amazing to watch because it's literally like, if people watch Attack on Titan, it's basically watching Attack on Titan. You have two men who look like they don't, they shouldn't exist going at it. So that guy came in and he was with a friend and I sort of caught what I was saying. And he walked to a barbell, loaded 225 and over it pressed it for five reps and then put it down. And I remember the guy coming up to me and asking me a question and I asked him, hey, is your friend a strong man or is he, you know, a bodybuilder or whatever? He said, oh, no, no, that's his first time in the gym. First time in the gym, had never done a single exercise in his life. And apparently he had seen, I don't know where, maybe in a, in a, like an old video of strong man, the overhead press. And so it was the one exercise he knew. So he decided to do it. But since he didn't know anything about lifting, he literally came in, put two plates on randomly and just pressed it overhead with no training. I don't know how much he weighed it, probably 300 pounds. So it's, you know, it's not his body weight, it's low in body weight, but still first time ever 225. And you hear tells of that across, it's like a myth or legend, some world record holders tell the same legends that you have guys who show up to the gym, first time they deadlift 400 pounds, first time they ever pick up a weight 400 pounds. You can't teach that. You can't become that. You're born with it. And so that guy sort of wrecked havoc in the gym. He picked one exercise after the other, just moving weights like they didn't exist. And then he left. And across the board, these tend to be the people who become champions because they just, the, the, the level they have when they start is so high that when they progress, it's just, how do you even compete with that? 
A 225 overhead press, I know for a fact, I can say it without blushing that I will never get to that. It's never going to be something I will do. He got it on his first day. And so it also sort of brings a balance to the universe in, in a sense because we get to witness that. We might never be able to do that, but we get to be witnesses. So that's already pretty fun in my opinion. So that's going to be that for uh, all of the experiences that I had with gigantic black individuals. And if you have had experiences with that type of people as well, let me know in the comments, tell your stories. It can always be fun to discuss it. If you are one of these people, please tell us what happened to you. Are you created on another planet? Were you fed GH when you were a kid? Are you a, a kid of two superheroes that then left the planet? What happened? I want to understand how you can exist. And uh, also the rules that exist with how many we can have per jam. Is there a specific set of conduct that we have to have around you? Do we need to bring food as offerings? All things that really interest me. So that's going to be that for this style of genetic. I have a lot of other stories about individuals I have met in my life that are going to be interesting and I will be sharing them with you in the future. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.